Hello crafters, I'm Gabby, B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I have another easy fancy fold for you which I am calling a pl uh, floating pleated card. It folds flat for an envelope and it opens up like this. It will stand up by itself and I've called it pleated because this is like pleats and also because these two panels are floating. This is my test card and when I make a test card I do tend to use retired products like the designer series paper is called Flight and Airy and it was available during celebration in January, February this, mark, uh, this year. Unfortunately it's no longer available but rather than me wasting it plus that I love this paper and I've got quite a lot of it and um, I'm using it for my test cards. Fortunately this worked out beautifully so not wasted. I also do a video immediately before the video, I do a card immediately before my video so that it reminds me of things that I need to tell you. And so this is the one I did this morning and I've used the Let's Go Fishing Designer Series paper which has just resi uh, retired from the last annual catalogue. Our new one went live three days ago, it is the 3rd of May that I'm recording this and you'll be seeing it on the 5th. Um, and also this card and this one, like last week's video, I've used fussy cutting from Design Series Paper as my images. But for today's card, I'm going to be do using stamped, coloured and die cut images. OK, so this one opens up like this as well. Plenty of room for a signature or extra sentiments on the back here. I put the fish here so that it like encourages people to do it on that one. Um, but obviously they could do it where they like. I haven't done it on this one yet, but I will do after the video. So I'm going to start off by telling you the card pieces that you're going to be needing. Unfortunately, this is take three. I can't believe the two mistakes that I made before. It's just to do with um, cutting things wrong size or wrong way round and whatever and the kind of mistakes any of us make but if it's wrong it's wrong and it needs to be replaced so rather than make you keep watching my mistakes I've started again but it does mean that my card base is already being scored but no worries I can get around that one uh, right so the card base is oh before I start on this, the measurements I'm giving you are inches for A4 cardstock users and they will be in the box below the video and also on my blog underneath my signature. Um, I would also be putting the measurements in centimetres for A4 cardstock users and also inches for North America who use letter size cardstock. Okay, so the card base measures four and one eighth inches by 11 and a quarter inches. If I only just put this up here, I'm going to guide it down here because when I was doing it previously I finished up really very wonky. So that's that measurement. I'll show the score lines soon. Um, then you need two pieces of cardstock for what I'm calling the flaps and this piece here and this piece here are the flaps or the floaty bits and you need two in copper clay, what was that clay copper? Copper clay, and they measure three and seven eighths inches by four and one eighth inches. And on top of that, you need two pieces of designer series paper which measure three and three quarter inches by four inches. Let me put this along here. And then you need one for the back page, and that's the one I'm calling back page. Cardstock measures three and seven eighths inches by two and three eighths inches, and the designer series paper, sorry, measures three and three quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't recognise that designer series paper out of the pack, but you do get this sheet here, and this one is that piece there, which I've cut down. And you will see me seeing this piece later on as well. Okay. 
So I've done those two. And then you need two inner panels, and that's what I'm calling these pieces here. And the cardstock measures three and seven eighths inches by one and one eighth inches. And you need two pieces of design series paper, and this measures three and a quarter inches by one inch. As you can see, that was the very first mistake. I got away with that because it didn't matter that it was wrong. I recognised it was wrong. You will also need some basic white and copper clay scraps for your images and sentiment. Okay, so we're going to start by scoring. Move that one out of the way. I like to use my scoreboard and you are going to score at two and seven eighths inches, four and a quarter inches, seven and a quarter inches and eight and five eighths inches. And then you need to do them so you've got a mountain fold, valley fold, mountain, valley. And whenever I do this, I always fold it over, use my bone folder, making sure that those two are lined up and burnish it. And then from the next one, I fold it over, make sure it's lining up again, burnish, and I do that to the end. Right, so... How do I decide the designs of my paper? Well, I tend to get scraps, and imagine these are just scrappy bits. I put that one on there, that one there, that one, which was a bit difficult because it was still attached to the big sheet, and then I put these like this, and then if I'm happy with what that looks like, then I'll go for it. At one time, I would never use more than one design series paper Occasionally, if it was really different, like maybe aeroplanes and the sky, but I would never put different patterns together like this. So I'm really proud of myself for this. So the first piece, what you need to do is, if you fold your card so that you've got, if you look, one, two, three, you want to be visible, just one and three. So fold that one up, and then this is going to go on here, lined up in the middle. That looks as if I've got that upside down. Have I picked it up the wrong way? No, you can't have done. This you can have done. There we go, that's better. So yes, do be careful which way you pick this up again. This has been this way, that way, and every which way. When you look at it, you should have the little bit there. You want two pleats, two folds, and then that little bit down there. That'll tell you your right way round. You'll also find it's a right way round if this doesn't fit on as well. Okay, so that needs to be adhered like that. So you've got that wide gap all the way round, but we're not going to glue this bit. So what I do is I get myself a little piece of scrap um, grid paper, and I'm doing that for video because I would normally use this bit down here, but you can't see that. So I want glue on this big piece over here, so to decide where my glue needs to go, I put my finger there and turn it over and that should measure at one and a quarter inches. Yep, one and a quarter. So I want to put glue on one and three eighths, okay? So that's my inch and one, two, three eighths. put that back and then I know where I'm going do three eighths that allows me an eighth of an inch for my glue to spread out and then I'm going to pop that on there and line it up Oops, move that a bit. Come back. Yep, that looks good. Okay. Then the next one I'm going to do is the back one. 
And there's a reason for doing this one next. Get that nicely centered. And then for this flap, what you need to do is again imagine one, two, three. So make two disappear, bring this one in and line it up so you've got an equal gap top and bottom, and this lines up with the back page so you can't see it. Okay, like that. So again, I'm going to just judge this. Put my finger now there. Should be one and a quarter. Oh, okay, a little bit out. But I'm going to put my glue on one and three eighths. So that's one, two, three eighths. Not only does it give you that extra little bit for your glue to spread out. It also gives you a little bit of room if you've got a slightly shaky hand as well. Right, so now I'm going to put this one on. Line that up. There we go. Oops, I came out the edge there, look at that. I'm not going to worry about that too much at the moment, she says, having just stuck her card down. But that's okay, that will come up. There we go. That was very, very clumsy. But I would have to leave it to dry a bit before I can put the, um, use my eraser on it. Now these two pieces are going to go in here. Obviously don't do what I've just done because it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge to get this in place without gluing the card down again. But these things happen. In fact I'm going to turn it that way so I can get this one in here. Obviously no right or wrong way here. All you need to do is just get the lines lined up and in the centre of the panel and then for this panel I'm tell you what I'm going to do to make life a bit easier for myself while I'm working so that I've got time to allow that to dry I'm using a piece of waxed paper and I'm going to put it over there and that will stop any contact there when I'm ready to go back to get that sorted out it'll be nice and dry for me um, right I just need to lift that up a bit to put my piece down in fact shall I leave that piece to later no there's enough room there I just need to be careful not to permanently seal this down Nobody will know. That's it, like that. That's the way to do it. Right, okay. So the sentiment I've used here is a retired sentiment, but there's no reason why you couldn't do a bigger sentiment, uh, sentiment that comes over from here. Or you may have kept the set. Let me show you the set that this comes from. It's quite an old one, but I kept it because it is vertical. And I think occasionally vertical stamp sets are really useful. So it's called Vertical Greetings. What an innovative name. Happy birthday, thank you, congrats, I love you, for you, and just because. And for this card, it worked out brilliantly. 
So I am going to stamp this on a scrap of basic white and I'm going to use copper clay ink as I have this out what I'm going to do I'm going to stamp two I will die cut the second one later on and I will just put it in my box ready to be used for something else right so that I'm going to die cut and again um, I think this I don't know if this is just retired or retired last time um, but this was the stamp set was called sending smiles and the dies were called sending which were those you might remember it but this here I wonder if these were out at the same time actually that was 159, what number was on that? Sometimes the numbers are quite similar. No, 141, one, too far away. But this fits this sentiment brilliantly. So that needs to be die cut. And for the inside of my card here, what I'm planning is, if I haven't lost it, um, oh, this piece here. I want to use this. I think that will fit in there quite nicely. It will be covered up. So what I need to do is I need to die cut that. I've already die cut that one. And the dies I've used for that. Now this one, these have just retired. And this is the deckled rectangles. And I keep all of my layering dies. All of them. Um, so what size was that? Was that number? Was that? That was number four for the brown one. And this one, number three, fits on it brilliantly. Okay, so that's more die cutting I need. And then the images. I showed you these last week that I had done. And I'm hoping that I could use one small plane and a big plane. But we need to find uh, see what fits in. So first of all, let's do these bits, get those in. Let me move these now, otherwise they're just going to go. I hope I've left them there long enough for you. Um, somebody else did say that they liked the idea of having the measurements on little stickers like that. Um, so let me just bring my big shot over. Yes, I still use my big shot. Um, I use it because I like to have the magnetic plate underneath. which Stamping Up used to sell. Unfortunately, they don't now. So, I'm going to just cut the this bit off of here so that can go back into my scrap bin. Right, you can go over there. Oops, you can go over there for the time being. And that's getting bent, so let's turn it around the other way. I can't get my head over this. Oh, that's not straight, is it? The disadvantage of the magnetic sheets with smaller dies and it's happening to this one because it's quite narrow is the edges jump to one of the nearest um, magnets because the magnets on this sheet here are little circles if you tip it sideways you can actually see most of the time if you just move the paper to go with the magnets uh, to go with the dies whichever way they want to go just follow it and it normally works quite easily quite well okay let's try this i 
I do have a stamp stamping up cut and emboss machine. It's just that they advise us against using the Sizzix Big Shot, uh, the Sizzix magnetic plate in their machine because they haven't had the opportunity to test it and therefore if we do use it and we spoil our machine um, there's no guarantee for it. Um, right, I've done those. Oh, right. Let me just pop this down here. I'm going to pop this one on. Let me just see what it looks like on here. Make sure it doesn't... Oh yes, good. That's in there brilliantly. Okay, so I'm going to attach these two. It's so automatic for me to go for Tombow when I'm gluing. My previous videos I'm trying to use the stamping seal. But I'm afraid my relationship with Tom Pope goes back a very long way. And it's been a great relationship, I have to say. Okay, so let's put this one on here. Now let me just double check, because I thought, quickly before it dries. Yes, that's good. Okay, so that's in fact, that's more than good. I think that's really good. So, that's the uh, sentiment. I cut a piece of copper clay that measures half an inch by three and three quarters, and that should fit on there. Oh, top to bottom, yep. Let's bring it over a bit, and then that should fit on top of it as well. Yes. Okay, so let's do that. Oops. Oh, I must tell you that um, I may not be able to get a video done for next week. I've got a busy week next week with hospital appointments. Um, it's the... It's my third quarterly checkup since I stopped having chemo. And so I've got tests next week, and also next week I'm having my cataracts done too. So yay! Excited about that. It's been a long, long time coming. Right now, this I'm going to adhere with this one closed so that I can see that it is centered. There we go, so I just need now to decorate this bit and this is what I'm not sure of. So if I bring over the circle dies, these are the decorated circles which I believe have also been retired. This from the last catalogue I think. So let me see what the, how big these are. That's far too big. Let's go down two. That's quite big. Nope. In you go. Let's put my lid on that. So what I want to do is the big plane. Let's see how that fits in. Would I better get a little one in as well? That would be quite nice. Or the one down from that. In fact, that would be the... Yeah, it's got to be down, hasn't it? Well, that would work. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use these two sizes, I'm going to use these two planes. And I am going to die cut a circle from this, and I haven't brought enough over with me, so bear with me. Oh, 
Come on, let go. You're not going to be big enough, are you? You will. Right, here we go. Is that right? Big enough? Yep. And copper clay I've got in front of me, so I know I've got a piece here that's big enough. Me thinks. No, I don't think you have. Let's try this one. Yep, that's big enough. Okay, let's do those two pieces. Did I put all the planes back? I think I did, didn't I? That wasn't very clever. Never mind. Right, let's do this. There we go, that's beautiful. Let's move it in a bit. And that's beautiful too. Yes, I was saying that I got um, the tests and my surgery next week. The following week, I think I'll be okay to make a video. The only appointment that I have that I know of so far is to actually see my oncologist for the report of the tests I'm having done. So there we go. Right, um, come back, you two. Did I put you on top? You're all the same. Don't think I'm disappointed with any of you, am I? That's a bit lighter, that's a bit lighter. Okay, right. Let's stick them together first. That'll be easier to make our decision. What I was going to think of doing, was, as well as having that there, I was thinking about having a bit of a background to it. Like I did on the birds. You may notice I just used a stamp at the back there stop it just being plain white so the stamp that I'm thinking of using is this one here which is from the stamp set of Adventurous Sky and I'm thinking about using a new colour which is basic beige which is so very very light which I think could be ideal for this I haven't tested it before so I better test it first So let's do it once, twice. Once I think might be too heavy. Yes, we're going to do it, stamp it off. Okay, make sure I've got this the right way. So stamp off, stamp. Oh, it looks quite impressive, doesn't it? Stamp off. Yep, I definitely like that. Let's go around the other way. Hmm. What do you think? Do you like that little bit? Now let's pop them both together. Oh, I found the plane that I pulled aside for that one. There must be another one flying around somewhere. Okay, Tombow. When I'm doing cards that have all this extra width to them, I don't tend to use dimensionals. Occasionally I will do, but uh, I feel that there's enough body to the um, card as it is. There we go, that'll be nice. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's bring this one back. The colours that I used for this was copper clay and smoky slate. Put 
put this as close to the bottom. I don't mind the edges touching the edge here, but I just want room to put this little one in as well. I'll use one of the other little ones as well on the back where people will think oh, I'll sign there. How far can you go? There we go. So pop that on there. This is a bit you may want to use dimensionals. There we go, that's today's card. Another masculine card for you. That would be great for Father's Day as well. Um, let me just show you that now that it's all done. And then it opens up if you don't hold on to it. That's dried nicely, I'll do that after the video. So, what do you think? Good. I like that. I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep that in there. Otherwise, I'll forget. Okay, so that's today's project for you. I hope you like it. Um, masculine cards for you again. And here's the birds. Many thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you give it a try. I look forward to seeing you next time. It may or may not be next week, depending on how everything goes. Um, every, I mean, everything will go fine, but I mean, time-wise, how time goes next week. Um, but I should be back with you the following week. Many thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Take care. Happy crafting. Cheerio.